Yes, my peoples, it's T. And yes, I'm back with another Apprentice reaction and my thoughts and views. So, week nine, let's get it. So yes, this week, um, the task was to create some men's um, lotion, cream, all of that stuff. Yeah, you know, you've seen it already. Um, and Rochelle on the other team was very keen to be PM. She was talking about it in the car to Bradley, to be fair. Um, and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, got to the main, got to the main room. Bradley cheekily forced himself. He's like, so I'm PM this week. Um, not even a vote, no voting, just I'm PM this week. Um, but then Rochelle, um, <laughs> Rochelle was like, hold on a minute. Um, we need to vote on this. That's not how it works. And to be fair, she does have, she does work in the beauty industry. So I understand why she wants to be the PM. It's almost like this task was kind of made for her somewhat, even though the target audience is men. Um, however, the vote in the end went to Bradley. So Bradley was PM. Um, so I do feel a little bit so sorry for Rochelle in that sense. Um, but yeah, they chose a target audience of 30 to 40s. Um, and the snake idea uh, with the venom from Bradley sounded okay at the time. Um, and but he wanted a bright colored green liquid which is for me the wrong target audience for 30 to 40 year olds sounds very childish but hey let's see let's see how it goes as as we go on on the other team danny the silent owner was the pm um they chose 50 plus as their target audience um and everybody wanted to be on the brandon team but in the end it was danny and victoria um but megan and simba moved onto the manufacturing team Megan and Simba worked very well together last week, so um, that, that could be a blessing in disguise. Um, but listen, Danny should never be on a Brandon team after ever again. After her lunchbox crap from last week, or whenever the hell that was, um, and she'd done it again this week with a poor design. It looked like a candle burner, um, some sort of star. I don't know what that was. But um, Bradley and Marnie, um, to be fair, Marnie was making some very good points about it looking very young and not premium, but he had his idea in his mind and he stuck to his guns. Um, and laugh out loud uh, at the fact that Rochelle clearly does not trust Avi at all because she wouldn't let him do anything, literally treating him like a child. He was like, so what can I do whilst you're making this, you know, formula? And she, and she was like, well, I don't think we should do, you know, anything at the same time. Let's do it one at a time so I can basically watch you and see what you're doing. Um... And then Simba and Megan, to be fair, um, they was focused on the key elements, touch, smell, feel, look. Um, and even though their finished product looked very basic, um, didn't look like anything special, at least it was a product that looked, that resembled an actual, you know, a lotion, a cream, um, as opposed to the ever team creating some weird green watery substance that stained the skin. Ridiculous. Um, and then... Rochelle and Avi fighting like siblings was a joke as well. Like, like the worst thing they could have done for a skin product is to not test it on your skin until like towards the end. It literally waited till the end when it's too late. Um, so yeah, very very poor, very very poor. Um, and again, Danny's ideas rubbish, rubbish. She should have just listened to Victoria every week, every single week. I see Victoria make some very good points, and people just don't listen to her. I need to see her as as PM or something next week because. She keeps saying a lot of good things to be fair, Victoria, but no one listens to her. Um, and her, and this is a side note on Danny. Probably, um, probably, literally, no need for me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Danny's makeup was ridiculous as well. <laughs> her makeup this week, I don't know what is going on, but it was a whole different color to the rest of everything else. It just, she looked like a clown. No offense, <laughs> but it was it was it was distracting me, it was throwing me off. Like, why is your face a whole different shade to everything else? But anyway, um. And yeah, why does Danny's logo and color profile look like Nivea? Like, why did they copy copy the branding of Nivea? Literally, it was Nivea. It doesn't stand out. It's a Nivea branding. Um, blue, navy, and white text. Basic, 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 basic. Um, but yeah, so going back to the, 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 you know, the green dyeing of the skin from Brady's team. That, insane. Like, from that moment happened... I said to myself, this team is not selling any products at all. They've automatically lost. They have automatically lost in my mind based off that because it's a skin It's a skin product. You cannot have that in the industry. It's actually illegal. I'm pretty certain. So um, at least the Everteens, you know, a product was normal. 
Um, so yeah, as expected, poor feedback from the market research. Um, even though they got some good feedback in relation to the yeah, the kind of the, the team that had the you know the normal product, if that makes sense. Um, and I say every week, and I'm going to say it again, this group is very consistent. Series 17, they are very consistent, consistently rubbish. Every single week, they are absolute trash. I cannot believe how rubbish. Where did I find this group of people? I say every week, but it's so bad. It's so I'm getting sick of Series 17. Every week, it's just poor. Nothing is good. Um, but anyway... Um, and Alan Sugar this week in the boardroom actually made me laugh a few times as well. As usual, he has lots of jokes. Um, and the fact that he called out the waffling from Danny, I just loved it. He called it out straight, said, yo, you, you're speaking rubbish, like you're, you're waffling. And then a comment, the comment, the miracle comment from Simba, <laughs> that was hilarious too. A bit of a dangerous game to play there, um, to, be, to be saying, you know, obviously being a little bit cheeky to... Alan Sugar, they're a bit dangerous, um, especially when you're trying to get caught up a million of his money. Um, so in the end, um, as expected, as I predicted, Bradley, Bradley's team got zero orders. Um, and in my, in my, in my opinion, um, I think that he should go home. And guess what? No messing about Alan Sugar. As soon, as soon as I said that to myself, no messing about, no even talking. Alan Sugar was like, you're fired instantly instantly like no waiting bradley go home peace no talking gone so i love that i love that so i was like oh it's gonna be a double firing this week okay okay so yes um then the rest of the team got brought back in um victoria's comment about danny being being a competitor um was actually quite funny as well in the end um i know i'm jumping ahead here but v victoria made a, a comment about um, working with danny she thought that she was um, her biggest competitor. And then after working with her, she see that I, ha I have no, I have no competition here. Like, she could be right to be fair. Um, anyway, laugh out loud also at Marnie trying to save herself by um, saying it's only fair that you fire someone from the the other part of the team because you you already got rid of Bradley. Hilarious. Um, and then Tim's comment to Avi too, like Avi. To be fair, Avi does talk very childish and very condescendingly. So I'm not surprised that Tim was getting a bit frustrated there. Um. Rochelle and, and for me, Rochelle and Abby's reasons um, for not going home were invalid for me. They weren't valid at all. Um, because, like, yes, you get a brief from the PM, but use your own brain. Like, yeah, the, the, yeah, he said to make it green, but if the green is making you skin stain, use your own brain and change it. It's ridiculous. You're not going to be like, you're not going to just follow um, him off a cliff. It's just insane. It's common sense. It's business. Um, it's obvious, to me, it's clear that because Rochelle wanted to be a PM, she was being a little bit disruptive, a little bit um, spiteful, in my opinion. Um, and Karen was very right about Avi being completely out of his depth. And I'm glad it's been obvious now, it's been pointed out. Um, so in my in my opinion, um, any one of them could have went in the end. Any one of them. But in the end, the double firing was as expected. Avi. Avi got sent packing, sent home, finally, because this guy has been trash. To be fair, I really actually wanted to see him in the interviews, to be fair, because I think it would have been great TV. would have been funny to see him in the interviews getting grilled by everybody. But nah, he was he, he was poor. He's, he was poor from day one. Um, so I'm glad he is out of there. Gone. So yes, um, Avi and Bradley, peace. Um, so now that means that Simba is the final male in the process everyone else who's left now is a female and essentially um that means we are now into week 10 which is next week's task is about dog food so let's see what happens let's see what happens so yeah that was the apprentice my thoughts are the right two people went home um the apprentice again was poor this week and let's see what happens with the dog food task next week i'm not really um i'm not really holding much hope for that being a good task to be fair it sounds like a a rubbish task anyway to be fair already it's quite it's it's quite similar to the current task that they've done this week it's just obviously not making a skincare product it's making dog food so yeah i'm not really enthralled about next week's task beforehand but let's see what happened let's see what happens but catch me next week right here for apprentice week 10 but in the meantime like comment subscribe all of that jazz peace <laughs>